in every basketball game I've ever played, right? I'm not sure I've ever stepped on the court where I thought I was gonna lose. This was a game I was getting into that I didn't think I could win. But I think my definition of win was a little skewed. Hello, friends. Welcome to Just a Couple of Guys with my partner, Pat Crimmins, and yours truly, Ray Rogina. Today, we tell the story of mind over matter, the story of a courageous young man facing a relentless enemy, the story of a St. Charles proud son, Justin Hardy, taken from us all too soon. Through discussion with his mother, Karen Hardy, Pat and I will review Justin's life and legacy and the creation and support of the Hardy Strong Foundation. We begin that conversation with Mrs. Hardy in a few moments after a word from one of our fine sponsors. Stay tuned. Hello, friends. This is Ray Rogina. Hey, the Kane County Cougars are back for the summer. The best family entertainment around features sunshine, baseball, and fireworks through Labor Day with great food, entertainment, giveaways, and running the bases after every game. There's something for everyone at a Cougars game. And Thirsty Thursdays feature $2 beer, pop, and hot dogs. And on Sunday, a $15 ticket gets you $15 right back in concession cash to spend at the ballpark. What a deal for you baseball foodies. Come visit us at beautiful Northwestern Medicine Field this summer for your dose of sunshine, baseball, and fireworks, and make your family memories today. At McNally Heating and Cooling, we understand that customer satisfaction starts with arriving at your home on time. Your service technician will apply the same attention to detail and quality workmanship to every job, large or small. We offer upfront, honest pricing, and we'll make sure the job gets done right from start to finish. From furnace and air conditioning service, minor repairs, or total equipment replacement, we do it all. Give us a call or find us online and let the luck of the Irish work for you. We're back and uh, to say the least, very pleased to welcome Mrs. Karen Hardy uh, to our podcast. And Mrs. Hardy, it's a real pleasure. Uh, thank you for joining Pat and I today. Thanks for having me today. Uh, well, we, we know what the topic is and we're going to get right into it. And I, I'd like to have you uh, help clarify for our audience a little bit about your family and a little bit about Justin as he moves from... Um, little boy to a student athlete at St. Charles East High School. Yeah, sure. So we're, our family's originally from Michigan, um, grew up near East Lansing and kids all started out being big Spartan fans. Um, go green. What grade? Go green. <laughs> go green, go white. Yes. <laughs> Sorry. Yes. So kids grew up uh, big 10 fans. Uh, we moved here to St. Charles about 15 years ago with a job relocation for my husband. And um, that was about the time Justin was going into third grade and he has an older sister, Jackie, a couple of years older than him and a younger son, younger brother, Nathan, who's three years younger than Justin. All right, so he gets to St. Charles East High School and he's, uh, you know, to say the least, the records and the stats, they speak for themselves and I'm not gonna get into the minutia of all that. We, we know what happened all conference, uh, great uh, individual statistics, great team statistics. Pat pointed out the number of charges he took, uh, which always talks to, to the grit of a, of a basketball player. But as a parent, watching all this unfold, including those great buzzer beaters, uh, uh, at least two of them that I witnessed and thought were phenomenal, mm -hmm. uh, how do you sit in the stands and watch all that unfold? Well... I loved it. it. High school basketball is about the most fun it gets, honestly. Um, you know, not everyone loved Justin on the court. That goes without saying. Um, his character off the court was different than his character on the court. And there were cringeworthy moments as a parent sometimes. Um, 
but it's because he didn't back down to anybody on the court. And um, that's, that's what made him the player that he was for sure. And um, yeah, it's hard as a parent, uh, if you're not thick skinned enough to listen to the other parents and other uh, student sections, uh, give your, your son or daughter a hard time when they're playing, but that's just part of it. And um, it, it, it came with the good and it, was also tough times as well, but mostly just great years watching him play high school basketball. There must have been a time, however, when you're sitting there watching a game and the ref made a call that you just really blew your stack at. And uh, <laughs> I have to believe that happened at least once during his career. Maybe <laughs> once or twice. <laughs> now, listen, he. Uh, uh, let's talk a bit about the uh, recruiting process. He went to a, a premier academic institution in Washington University in St. Louis. I mean, you know, when you look at the ratings of that school, it's right up there near the top of uh, na national universities. But about the recruiting process, did he have some choices here? That, did, he, uh, did he think about some other places? He did have some choices, yes. He did get um, everything from small D1 school full ride uh, scholarships to um, D3, no funding, um, come play basketball and we'll figure out the rest of it type of offers as well um, and everything in between. So there were options for him to choose from, yes. And I get the sense that choosing Washington U, this young man here was a, a, a fine academic student as well. Mm -hmm. And he saw not only, well, uh, Division Three. Pro basketball, uh, maybe a pipe dream, but he saw a career opportunity to prepare for the future there. He actually summed it up by saying he was preparing himself for the next 40 years instead of just the next four years. He knew he could get to play basketball for four years and didn't think he had much of a future in it after that and was very realistic and knew that Wash U was the exact school that could set him up for a great career opportunity to take care of him for the rest of his life. You know that. And as I uh, note to the uh, audience, Wash U as a Division Three basketball school was not something that was, uh, you know, just uh, uh, inferior. We don't talk about it. They were a powerhouse in Division Three, a couple of national championships in the first uh, decade of the new century. And uh, uh, he wasn't going to play uh, uh, sim simple basketball. It'd be quite competitive. Very competitive. Their program is well-known and they're in one of the toughest conferences out there um so he had no reservations that he'd be playing high caliber basketball talk to us then after he had a, a great start at wash you uh great statistics coming out of the gate uh you know a leader on the team etc talk about the uh initial uh diagnosis uh as i read it uh, and take us from there yeah, so he had texted me about three weeks prior to actually going into the hospital, just saying he felt like he had some um, upset stomach concerns, maybe some reflux. And we talked about a few potential remedies. And I said, you know, if it continues, we need to get it looked at. Um, but the pain got so severe one night, he ended up going into the hospital. He, they did indeed determine he had a perforated ulcer. When they went to perform surgery on that, they opened him up and then they saw the evidence of cancer within his um, his stomach and surrounding area. And of course, uh, this led to uh, quite a bit of uh, treatment and mm -hmm. uh, it, it debilitated him to some extent, but not really because he's back out there playing. And uh, not only that, but becoming, uh, being recognized for his grit, uh, the mind over matter. I, mm -hmm. I watched the Sports Center. Talk to us about that Sports Center uh, piece uh, that I thought was just eloquent. Yeah. So initially, Justin, of course, told his coaches and his teammates about his diagnosis um, in a very small window of people. Um, his college coach had decided to do a campaign with um, these shirts, in fact, and um, coaches were wearing them, players were wearing them, and people were like, 
what what is this all about? And the commentators were saying, you know, Justin's battling health issues, but never addressed what they were probably because they didn't know. Um, so Justin had decided in December while he was back to school and playing basketball again to go on Bob Quillman's podcast first. He's the one that actually broke the information about Justin's diagnosis. And then from there, that's when ESPN had heard about the story and wanted to do the piece on Justin and his story. And um, they approached Justin. Justin had a conversation with my husband and I about would we be comfortable with that, knowing full well that once that is out, there's no shying away from it being in the public eye. So we supported that. And I think it was very cathartic for Justin to tell his story and feel like he's showing people he's not backing down from this. And um, maybe it will help someone or inspire someone to go live their lives in their best way, just like he was doing exactly what he wanted to do, which was to play basketball, be with his friends at school and graduate. So when ESPN came and did the first piece, they actually did two. Uh, um, it was a, a real production. They came to our house. His teammates were here. They had done um, an event at St. Charles East to, um, it was a Hoops for Hope event. Um, they came and filmed there as well. So there were so many different facets to their story. Told about Justin's diagnosis. He talked about his treatment. He talked about getting back out on the court. And mostly the intent behind the story is to talk about that exact phrase, mind over matter, and how his way of beating this cancer is to live his life the way he wants to, regardless of the circumstances that he's been given. And hopefully that that will inspire others to do the same. And I got the opportunity, obviously, never having met Justin, had the opportunity to watch a couple of other clips from a, a couple of St. Louis uh, stations, did a nice piece on him. Mm -hmm. And I suppose, to your earlier point about making it public, I get the sense that you not only wanted to show the world his grit, but also, and this is what I picked up, the, the, the grit and the um, love of a variety of people that surrounded him, his teammates, they, the way they talked about him is, uh, it was fascinating. And so I think I understand that, uh, you know, and then talk to us a bit about this, just before his passing, the 2022 Perry Wallace Most Courageous uh, Athlete Award uh, that he received. Yes, yeah, so the writer um, in St. Louis actually nominated Justin for this award. Um, and he also was the recipient of the award as the writer as well. And this took place down during the uh, Final Four tournament. And it was in New, New Orleans that year. So Justin went down to receive this Perry Wallace Courage Award. Um, and honestly, his speech at that award was probably the most... honest and real words coming from him I'd ever heard. It was raw and real, and it was, I believe, mostly unrehearsed. Um, he spoke from his heart, and I don't think there was a dry eye in that crowd. Um, it was very moving. At, as a mom, especially listening to their son talk about these things that, um, what courage meant to him and how grateful he was to accept the award it was really touching. And shortly thereafter, you also appeared, uh, you attended the Dick Vitale uh, a gala. Uh, but my last question, I think, centers around what I thought to be the, the most poignant part of this trip for me watching all this unfold. And that was senior night at Washington University uh, in St. Louis, uh, his last game. Uh, mm -hmm. Take us through that, if you if you would. Right. So typical standard last home game of the season, honoring all the seniors. 
Um, so Justin was obviously one of them. Um, and at that point, we weren't sure if the, there would be a postseason for the team. Um, so we, every game, you never know if it's their last game or not, you know, uh, as you're towards the end of the season. So um, a whole group of his high school friends came down from all over. And I mean, literally all over different states came down, gathered for this senior day game. They had a huge cheering section. Um, family and friends had signs. Um, obviously, we walked across the court with Justin for him to accept his senior award announcements like all the other seniors. Um, I just will never forget the smile on his face that day. He was proud. He was proud of himself. He was proud to be on this team with other men that he loved and respected. And it was a great day. And the game itself was special. He was in his toughest days. He was really starting to feel poorly at this point. Um, lots of edema and swelling in his legs and pain walking, but he put on that jersey, he sat on the bench. Of course, you know the story, they let him in for the last play of the game and um, his defender let him you know, go in for the last shot. And it was just, it was heartwarming for sure. And it just talked about the spirit of the game, not necessarily, they weren't just doing it for Justin, they were doing it for the love of the game and um, know how much that meant to Justin as well. Thank you, Pat. Well, um, as Ray pointed out, I did uh, look at his statistics and um, I think it's the 2018 last year at St. Charles High School and then he took 20 charges and right away, that says my kids played basketball. I had two daughters that played basketball um, and they played a lot of basketball, AAU, the whole thing. Uh, when I saw that, I said, well, this kid's a special kid. Taking a charge is a courageous event to take 20 in a season. And by the way, he probably took more. He only got credit for 20, <laughs> actually, the truth be told. So that says a lot about who he is and a lot about who you guys are in terms of how you raised him. He took charges like a badge of honor. I mean, that that was one of the statistics he would have been most proud of, for sure. Right. Um, one of the things that uh, we talk about, and I want to talk to you about it before we get into the, to the foundation and everything else, is this idea of genetic testing, mm -hmm. how it relates to stomach cancer, how it relates to, to Justin, and how it relates to you. Um, so if you could tell us a little bit about what it is and how important it is and, uh, how it relates to this particular story. Sure. Um, and it is a big part of the story and then it sets us up for the foundation as well. Um, so when Justin got his cancer diagnosis, um, and they had already taken some of his tissue for, um, to be biopsied and tested, a couple of different things happened. They had the the biopsy tested for his genomic testing of his tumor and his actual cancer, but then they also did his genetic testing to determine if there was a cause and a reason that this cancer occurred in his body. It is a rare cancer. It is not common in 21 year old men. Um, he was obviously very healthy and active and it didn't, there wasn't a reason for this cancer to occur if there wasn't a scientific explanation. Um, when his genetic testing did come back, they did find a mutated gene called the CDH1 gene, which meant that that particular gene, um, since it was a mutated gene, put it put him at a higher risk for not only stomach cancer, but lobular breast cancer is one of the other high risk factors with this gene mutation. So once we knew that, we found that it's a familial hereditary genetic mutation. So um, I was tested for that as well. And our other two children, Jackie and Nathan were both tested as well. Um, this particular gene mutation is a, it doesn't skip a generation. So it would go directly from the parent to 
the child and then sub, 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 subsequently passed on to their children as well. Mm -hmm. um, fortunately, the other two children, our other two children are negative for that gene mutation. Um, I was the carrier. Um, my husband did not get tested, but I did. And about the time I actually found out that I had the CDH1 gene mutation, I had been in for my annual um, mammogram and had found out that I did indeed have lobular breast cancer. Right when I found out that I also had the gene mutation, it was just coincidental timing, but that was the case. So the the gene mutation that I was at high risk for having this cancer did indeed occur. occur. So I, while Justin was returning to Wash U and doing his treatments and playing basketball, I had a lumpectomy to have my cancer removed. And um, after Justin passed, I actually followed up with my radiation to conclude my treatment with that. As it relates to the genetic testing, are you suggesting you would either have breast cancer or stomach cancer, or could it be both? <laughs> well, um, in fact, you can have both, and I actually did. So in January, I, because I knew I was at high risk for this same stomach cancer, hereditary diffuse gastric cancer, I decided to electively have my stomach removed. It's one of the few true preventions from getting this same cancer. So I did electively prophylactically have this surgery in January and they did indeed find 13 spots of the same cancer that Justin had inside my stomach when they removed it. So essentially Justin saved my life potentially from um, the, the same cancer that he had. So I'm grateful for it. If I had not had that genetic testing done, if he had not had it done, who knows where I'd be right now. Right. Um, have you gotten yourself to the point where you understand the, the ethics of genetic testing and all of the controversy involved, or is it just, I'm lucky that it happened and I, and I was able to save myself? Well, I am happy, but, um, <laughs> I, I'm, I know just dangerously enough knowledge. I won't even claim to be a scientist, a scientist or a medical person by any means, but I am trying to educate myself so that we can decide as our foundation grows, how we're going to create awareness about this subject. Um, there's a lot of controversy with it. Um, you know, we, we've talked about if we had known from the day Justin was born that he had this huge risk of a, a very dangerous cancer, would we have raised him differently? Would he have lived his life differently? These are questions that um, some people choose not to get their genetic testing done because they don't want to know those answers. Um, and I respect that as well. Now, at this point, uh, having having the genetic test and it coming back positive for the stomach cancer, there's nothing you could have done about it with that knowledge at the time, right? Correct. But, um, now, but <laughs> as going further into, into the future, it may well be mm -hmm. that things can be altered, stem cells, whatever it is. Sure. Uh, and there's, the problem. right. There are scans. Um, you can have, um, EGDs, you can have PET scans, you can, you know, there's definitely some surveillance that you can have done. Um, but as far as could I have changed the outcome? Probably not for myself or for Justin. Right. Um, I'm going to take a break now because I think this is a good time to do so. Uh, when we come back, we're going to learn about the foundation and everything related to it, why you started it, what it is. Um, and uh, of course, your your um, inaugural fundraising event, mm -hmm. uh, the uh, <laughs> the Amazing Race, which is That's coming right. up on August 5th. So uh, we'll be back after a word from our sponsors. Hello, friends. This is Ray Rogina. You face technology challenges every day that threaten to steal business, compromise data, and bring your business down. Without a good partner to help protect from phishing, ransomware, viruses, data breaches, employee turnover, and cybersecurity threats, your business is at risk of losing everything. TechWorks has been the trusted IT partner to Fox Valley businesses for over 20 years 
keeping systems secure and providing extraordinary customer service, helping your business grow. Call TechWorks today at 630-482-2227 or visit www.techworks.com. That's TechWorks with a Q. TEQ works and see how TechWorks IT service can transform and secure your business. Hello, friends. This is Ray Rogina. I'd like to say a few words about my friends at the Karis Group of Restaurants, one of our sponsors. I've been a frequent guest at all of their fine restaurants for years, one of which is Rookie's, which has locations throughout the Fox Valley and beyond. My favorite dish at Rookie's is the Euros plate with uh, the Saganaki appetizer. oop My wife, she loves the Hall of Fame chicken sandwich. But I can honestly say that I've never had a bad meal there, regardless of whatever I've had to eat. The wings are out of this world, the salads are delicious, great burgers, tacos, all American specialties, and don't forget their pizza. And of course, you can wash this all down with one of their famous Mai Tais. Try them out. St. Charles, Geneva, Elgin, Hoffman Estates, Huntley, and Roselle. Rookiespub.com. I'll see you there. All right, we're back with Karen Hardy, and we're talking about her son, Justin Hardy, and the foundation that uh, sprung from his life and death, uh, the Hardy Strong Foundation. Tell us a little bit about how it got started, uh, what it is today, and what you hope uh, it, it'll be in the future. Yeah, so back when Justin was early diagnosed and his coaches, had both his high school coach and his college coach were trying to think of things and ways to support and, and help. Um, his high school coach at St. Charles East, Pat Woods, started a GoFundMe. And people from all over were so incredibly generous. And originally it was to cover you know, medical costs and potentially funeral expenses and anything else that m we might have needed for, for helping Justin. Um, but because the outpouring was so amazing. We knew we needed to do something forward, going forward with that money. And we had time to talk with Justin about that because he was with us and, and knew what his fate was. And we had time to talk about his wishes and his intentions. And he was very clear that he wanted to start a scholarship fund for other exemplary student athletes going on to play collegiate sports, not necessarily basketball, just any sport at a high level academic university where they weren't going to be receiving full ride scholarships. So someone like himself that, you know, was going off to play the sport they love, but also get a great education. So we wanted to honor those wishes and knew that we needed to create a foundation in order to make that happen. So that was the crux of how it started. And it's interesting that he was involved in that process. What recommendations or ideas did he have for the foundation uh, specifically uh, that you guys incorporated? Yeah, specifically he wanted, um, he his wishes were that the students were going to a high academic caliber type school um, and that they weren't currently getting any funding to play their sports. So those were a couple of the requirements that he had. And he was very clear that there always had to be a recipient from St. Charles East every year. Nice. Um, and we worked so hard. I have to say that um, Jackie and Nathan, um, who are both on our board, they um, organized this first round of scholarshiping and had had many conversations with Justin about his wishes and knew exactly what types of candidates to look for. And they found a student at St. Charles East and a student at St. Charles North who were both awarded our first scholarships this past April. Nice. So and have the... been able to honor that. And I'm very proud that we've been able to do that um, for Justin. And um, next, next year, we're hoping to widen the scope of the schools that we can ask for people to submit applications for 
recipients. And then we want to continue to renew them every single year, as long as they're at this university and playing their sport. Um, any grade requirements? <laughs> yeah, the minimum GPA or anything? Actually, um, yes. <laughs> yeah. um, it was ahead. important for him to, for them to be academically minded. Sure. Uh, so you have a board of directors. Uh, you talked about that a little bit of what does that consist? How many we people? do. We have seven board members. Um, so three of them are family members and then four non-family members. And um, all people who love Justin and want to support his wishes. And I think have all the intentions of the missions that we've set out to accomplish in mind every time. And we meet once a month. We have since the, the moment we started and we set goals and we um, always start our board meetings actually discussing things that remind us of Justin and stories um, about him. So it's, it's a really great group of people who I think we're going to do amazing things. Well, the uh, um, website is hardystrong.org, and I take it you would receive donations through your website. Is that fair? Yes, we do receive donations through our website. And um, not only that, but we have an opportunity if you want to buy Hardy Strong apparel that helps to support, as well as we have our first event on our webpage and partners, um, value partners that have given us donations that we want to help support as well and recognize them for what they're doing for us as well. Well, and Ray's going to talk to you now about the amazing race uh, fundraiser that you have coming up on August 5th, right? Yes. Uh, and Pat uh, pretty well described the title, the amazing race, stomach the challenge, mind over matter. And it's at Mount St. Mary Park in St. Charles. And as Pat said, on August 5th, talk to us about that. And, and I, I only preface my question with another point, and that is, it seemed like this was one of Justin's favorite shows, The Amazing Race. Yes, Justin loves, Justin was anything about competition from loving card games and Monopoly as a very young boy to you know his love of sports participating and watching there was nothing like college football for him like saturday game day so he loved the survivor tv show and the amazing race tv show because of course they're about competition so we kind of tossed around ideas for our first run fundraiser and this was a no-brainer it just sounded like it was everything justin would be supporting and laughing at us for trying to create so that's it it's um, based on the the style of the tv show it's mental physical creative challenges along the way and it takes place in the park so it's all kind of contained in the park area you're not going all throughout the city like it is in the tv show but um there's something for everyone and i've told people that just because you're a fantastic athlete doesn't mean you're going to win this because there will be some things that will throw your way that uh, may not you might not be prepared for. Well, this is a team of four, as I understand it. In other words, uh, the entries are a group of four individuals, and uh, they're going to be uh, involved in a variety of uh, mental and physical challenges, uh, as the as the brochure says. Correct. <laughs> um, <laughs> now. If anyone wants to sign up for this, can they, or, or how does that work? Yes, so you can go online to hardystrong.org, and you'll see the event page about the Amazing Race, Stomach the Challenge event, and you can click on Get Tickets. If you'd like to form a team, you can still do that, right, or if good. you'd like to just come the day of, you don't have to compete to participate. You can join in. Um, we're going to have bands. We're going to have drinks. We're going to have an auction and a raffle. And we're going to have some local vendors and um, non-for-profit businesses also in attendance that day to just bring the community together. So there's, we're going to have a face painter. So there's, um, there's really something for everyone that day. So you can just show up even. And be a spectator. 
and not and be a spectator. Make, make Absolutely. A donation, be an opportunity to make a donation there. I'm I'm certain. Is that correct? Of course. Absolutely. Always an opportunity. And and St. Uh, Charles never fails in this regard. Uh, you know, I also saw in the brochure that uh, there's a number of sponsors, business sponsors who've jumped on board here. That uh, always is the case about St. Charles. Uh, and uh, this, this event uh, does not fail in that regard either, does it? I was just telling someone that the outpouring from the community and not just St. Charles, St. Louis and, and, and so many, so many other communities, it's, it's humbling because you're almost overwhelmed with people's generosity. It's, it's unreal, honestly. Um, you know, you tell the story to someone and they're like, well, what can I do? Can I donate something to your auction? Can I give you a donation? Can I sponsor you? How can I help? Can I volunteer? People want to, people want to help. It, it, St. Charles is an amazing community in that respect. I, I'm blown away with what people um, want to do to help. And uh, I'm, I'm just, well, I feel the same way as you do. And of course, uh, uh, on uh, on that August fifth, I'm sure the evidence will be very clear in the park. And uh, whether there are spectators or uh, individuals participating as part of a team, uh, it should be something else. I'm going to go to Pat to let us uh, wrap up this uh, conversation talking about the future of your foundation. Pat? Yeah, and a little bit uh, back to St. Charles. You know, that's the beautiful thing about St. Charles, whether it's St. Charles North, St. Charles East, it's one community. Mm -hmm. And uh, St. Charles has a history of supporting its own, and, and it's clear that that's being done here. Um, yeah, I wanted to talk a little bit about where the foundation goes. You said something about getting involved with genetic testing. What's the vision there, and, and uh, what, what do you see for the future as it relates to that. Yeah, so in addition to, you know, scholarshiping, that's one part of our mission. Part of another part of our mission is to bring access and understanding to what genetic testing is. It is a complicated process. There is some education that needs to go along with it. Um and we want to make it really simple for people to understand what that means. Um why should you get your genetic testing done? Who should get their genetic testing done? So we're working on bringing pieces and articles. Our first article is already out under our Learn tab on our website about genetics and what, what that means and specifically what it meant for just in specific genetic mutation. Um, so what we wanna do is bring awareness first and foremost and access and understanding to what testing is. And then our intention is with generous donations, we hope to provide financial assistance to those who need and want to get their genetic testing done. Um, it's not always covered by insurance. It's quite often not covered by insurance and there is an out-of-pocket cost to have this done. So we wanna make sure that the people that need and want it can get that done. We feel it's that important. That's fantastic. So you'll continue with the scholarships mm -hmm. um, and fundraisers every year, uh, the amazing race this year. But uh, is that something you see continuing into the future or you have other fundraising ideas? If, if everyone responds well to this concept and love it, it I could see this being an annual thing. Um, we've talked about other great ideas for fundraisers as well. So um, we're not we haven't locked ourselves into Oh, this being our only type of fundraiser every year. In fact, we do have a planned three-on-three -three tournament, basketball tournament, I should say, basketball. coming up in October. Um, it's We're doing it the weekend of the Scarecrow Fest, so it will be while lots of exciting things are happening in St. Charles. Um, it will again be at Mount St. Mary Park, um, so some outdoor basketball three-on-three, three, which is something that Justin loved to do, and it just feels like the right thing to do. So we will be doing that coming up soon. And then we're hoping to plan another major fundraiser. We've already um, hoping to plan something for that last weekend in July of next year. So do you have any sense of what you need uh, for the scholarship program to either continue as it exists or to, to branch into, into more scholarship opportunities? How much money do you need on an annual basis for that? 
That's a great question. So currently what we're awarding is $1,000 a year, renewable every year to, to any recipient that receives a scholarship. So this year we awarded two and we were hoping to open it up at least to the entire Fox Valley area next year. And if not more, because we could just open it up on our website and see, but we wanna see how much money we raised from this first event to see what we have to work with. But basically what we're talking about is $4,000 at a minimum. Sometimes students are there for five years and six with COVID these days. So um, we're committed to the number of years that they're playing their sport in college. Um, and we want to find new recipients every single year. And how does one uh, apply for such a scholarship? Is there a process? Yes, it's out on our website. Um, you go to hardystrong.org and you go under scholarships and there will be an application out there. Right now, this first year, it was opened up only to St. Charles North and St. Charles East students. But like I said, we are hoping we can expand that next year. And we'd That's like fantastic. to see lots of applications. That's fantastic. Well, uh, Karen, we wanted to thank you very much uh, for talking with us. We know it's a difficult uh, topic and subject. Uh, your son uh, lived 22 years mm -hmm. um, and passed away ultimately on May 29th, 2022. Um, during that time, he, he showed everybody what a fighter he was. And um, he was awarded the Jody Harrison Hall of Fame uh, award before he passed. And uh, that's... Uh, Symbolic, I think, of his efforts and his success as a basketball player. You, you, uh, you should take credit for, for the kind of uh, man that he was. Yeah, you're all, all of your family should take credit for that. Um, so for the podcast, uh, Patrick Crimmins, Ray Rogina, Paul Stuckel, the Fox Valley Magazine. Uh, until next time, hug your kids. Uh, understand that time is fleeting. And uh, until next time, thank you very much. This is beating it. This is me living my life regardless of the circumstances. If this isn't beating it, I don't know what is.